welcome to DC Today. I'm Trevor Cummings. I'm filling in for David Bonson today. I'm going to ask for some extra grace. Uh, I feel like I've been sick for about two weeks now, a cough I can't get rid of. So brain's a little bit foggy, but I'm going to encourage you to go to the written piece um, because there's a lot there. Uh, I pasted a pretty large piece that David emailed out this morning that I think you'll enjoy. It's um, kind of his perspective on inflation, which I think is extremely helpful because inflation has been headline news everywhere. And what you're seeing in prominent media really isn't kind of what David's synopsis is of what's going on. So my encouragement is to go to the DC Today written to grab that. Um, Today was all about inflation data. So people were anxious to see uh, where that print would come in. Um, I even read some reports this morning of Goldman Sachs saying, hey, if it came below expectation, then markets were going to take off, and then obviously vice versa. Interesting thing is that the data did come in lower than expectation. I believe expectation was something like 0.2 or 0.3 uh, for the month of March. It came in at 0.1. Um, and then the year-over-year figure came down from a 6% year-over-year inflation number to a 5% number. So what did the markets do? They took off. Um, and mid-trading day, um, you had positive on all three indices, Dow, S&P, and uh, the NASDAQ. And then markets fell off a cliff. And I shouldn't say a cliff, um, but they did end the day negative. So midday, you saw the Dow up maybe half a percent. Um, and the Dow finished the day down uh, 0.11%. So not a meaningful move, um, but a meaningful intraday move. Uh, one of the questions would be, what caused that? So if you went to just kind of your normal media sources, uh, they would say it was the Fed minutes. What's hard for me is minutes are just that. They're minutes of a meeting that's already happened. Um, So one of the headline things from those FOMC minutes was this talk of a mild recession sometime later this year. And, And one of the things I pointed out in the article or the writing today is that is not new news. Um, Again, these are minutes of a meeting that's already happened. David Bonson on the March 23rd issue of DC Today, he pointed this out and he said it in uh, kind of a comical way. He said he was driving home and he was thinking about math uh, and the the idea that Jerome Powell reported that the expected GDP growth was X. And if you looked at what it was for first quarter and you did the math, you saw there was a recession baked in there. So although investors got exactly what they wanted today, a lower inflation number, um, that talk from the Federal Reserve about this potential recession later this year causes fear. So again, um, investors went back to what they've been doing most of this year. They sat on their hands. Uh, Markets didn't move much, but you did see, like I said, the Dow went down 0.11%. S&P was down about 0.41%. NASDAQ was down 0.85%. 10-year Treasury hardly moved, uh, approximately down three basis points. Top performing sector of the day was industrials. Um, I believe it was industrials, energy, healthcare, and materials were all positive for the day. Uh, You saw some of the more speculative sectors get hit the hardest. Consumer discretionaries were down 1.54% on the day. Um, Oil prices were up 2.06% on the day. Uh, That left a a barrel of oil about $83.23. So um, where does that put us now? I I would assume that most of us are going to shift our focus to Friday, where we start getting some earnings reports. Now, again, earnings reports are backwards looking, but we're going to get some context and some projection of how the last three months of uh, economic data and everything is impacting um, earnings. It's unfortunate that we've become addicted to these Fed meetings and everything going on when markets really, in the long run, they are driven by profits. Uh, Growing earnings have the highest correlation to stock returns in the long run. Um, But we have a culture that has made uh, Jerome Powell as famous as Michael Jordan. So we hang on every word and we are very curious. Again, I'm going to encourage you to go to David's writing um, because we are lucky here at the Bonson Group that we have a very strong economic mind uh, that we happen to name the group after, uh, the Bonson Group. Um, So his writing will give you some insight that I don't think you're really going to gather anywhere else. Um, One of the conversations I've been having a lot with clients, um, and and it's not a conclusion, it's more of a question. And and I ask this, hey, if we take a time machine back to March of 2020, 
um, we know what happened is COVID, right? Uh, and somebody decided to basically take the light switch and turn the whole world off. So we all found ourselves locked in our homes. Um, and there's two different things happening. Uh, the consumer didn't really have the opportunity to spend money. We saw a big spike in personal savings rates. Um, but businesses were left with a decision of, hey, what do we do with inventories? Uh, how much should we be ordering? Um, and there's some chaos that was created for supply chains. Now, as you know, with consumers, I'm sure a lot of you felt this, in that time of March of 2020, going into 2021, and, 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 and even further, we all had this pent-up desire to buy stuff and do stuff. Uh, we wanted to go on vacations. We wanted to go to restaurants and, and things like that. So from my vantage point, if you take that light switch and you basically turn it off for the consumer and you leave businesses scrambling to figure out how they're going to survive for this moment, and then you all of a sudden turn that switch back on with a lot of pent-up demand and supply chains that weren't ready for it, um, that's going to have an impact on inflation. And, and again, then you have a Federal Reserve that comes and they want to fight inflation, right? Because they believe in a strong employment and stable prices. And what do they do? They raise interest rates. And then we have issues like the Silicon Valley Bank issue, right? There's a lot to unpack there. But I think um, most people would agree a big issue for them, right? When they had $20 billion of what they would call um, safe assets that went down, um, I think it was $1.8 billion. They had to sell them at a loss. Why were they selling those at a loss? Because of rising interest rates. So I think David Bonson does such an excellent job at zooming out, allowing you to see how those dominoes fall and the knock-on effects of all these decisions, um, whether they are from businesses, whether they are from Capitol Hill or, or whatnot. So again, strong encouragement to um, go and read the, the written DC Today. Um, David will be back tomorrow with his normal DC Today writing. On Friday, we'll begin to get earnings reports. Tomorrow, we'll also get jobless claims. Um, so we will be here every single day providing you uh, what's going on in the world, our perspective, um, and we're always available to answer questions. So reach out um, as things come up. Um, I wish you the best. And again, you'll have David Ponson back tomorrow. Mm -hmm.